Hey guys, just got this inverter in yesterday. It's the LV6548 from MPP Solar. I had ordered this over a month ago. It was back ordered. It just arrived and I am super excited to finally get this installed and tested. This inverter is capable of 6500 watt output at 120 volts. With two of these inverters you can do 13,000 watts in either 120 volt or a split phase 120 240 configuration. A little background here on my project before we get started. When I first began this several years ago, uh, I really wanted an MPP solar inverter. At the time, MPP solar did not carry any 48 volt inverters for the US market. They had 24 volt inverters, um, they had 48 volt inverters, but they were 240 volts only. And their solution really was to use a step down transformer to create your 120. And I know some other people are using transformers with 240 volt inverters as well, but I don't really see that as a feasible solution in my opinion. At the time, they did tell me they were working on a 48 volt inverter that supported split phase for the North American market. But after waiting for about a year with no updates and no new products, um, that's the point at which I purchased the Ames inverter and I've been using the Ames since. Now they have released some 48 volt inverters that support split phase since then. However, none of them had the ability to scale up and remain efficient in a way that made sense to me. The LV6548 seems to be the first one that fits that bill in my opinion, allowing the ability to scale up to very large scale power systems while remaining efficient in terms of self consumption at the same time. So all that being said, we're going to take a quick look at this inverter today. We'll go over the specifications, the features, take a look inside. Um, we're not going to do any load testing or anything like that. I really just want to do an overview and show you how it's built. And then we'll be using this in some upcoming videos to test some 48 volt batteries that I have on the way. This thing is huge. This is 16 and 1 half inches wide. It's 21 inches high and it's 5 and 3 quarter inches in depth. Additionally, it weighs in at 40 and 1 half pounds. And just to put that in perspective a little, here's my 24 volt inverter. And here's my 12 volt inverter. Looking at the front of the inverter, we have a display with a variety of LEDs and functional buttons. This display actually comes out. You can remove this from the inverter and mount it in a remote location, which is pretty cool. Looking at the bottom of the inverter, we have an RJ45 port for the remote display. We have a dry contact relay, a USB port for connection to your computer, an RJ45 for connection to a BMS of a lithium battery, and an RJ45 for RS-232 communications. We have uh, two areas where you can install cable glands for your input and output cabling. Additionally, we have four MC4 connectors on this inverter. This actually has two built-in MPPT solar charge controllers at 4,000 watts each. So that's a total of 8,000 watts of solar power you can plug into this inverter. And it also supports higher voltage. It has a working voltage or VMP between 90 and 230 volts DC. And near the top of the inverter we have a vent with filter on both the left and the right hand sides. There's a single screw on the front here for removing this display and then the whole thing just slides out. And there's an RJ45 communications cable. So now we can essentially take this display and mount it pretty much anywhere. There are five screws holding this top lid on to remove it like so. And then a few cables on the back here you need to pull out. So taking a look inside here, we have our positive and negative bolts for the lugs of your battery input. We have the AC connection block. We have the input line, input neutral, input ground, output line, output neutral, and output ground. Over here you can see the PV inputs. We have a pair of red and black. And then on the output we have two reds, one for each controller. And then we have a shared combined uh, black wire for the negative. Alright, so I don't want to take this apart too much, but I do want to show you what's here. You can see where the positive and negative lead come in there and there's a large inductor. And you can see how this baffling is done here. So this fan is specific to the cooling the MPPT under there. We have two large inductors at the back as well. We can see the negative and the positive come off the charge controller. And they go into the battery inverter area. And this is a pair of number 10 uh, gauge wire with a 105 degrees Celsius insulation rating. On the inverter side here, our negative comes in and actually goes to what appears to be this heat sink. Our positive comes in here and it goes straight through this 200 amp fuse. We have a series of capacitors, some transformers. I don't, you know, pretend to know what exactly is going on here. Um, I'm just familiar with some of these parts. Here's a closer look at that fuse that's down in there. It is replaceable and it does have a UL listed component stamp on it. Alright, so I do want to remove this top board here because I see some components of interest down in there. It appears to be a logic board of some sort with some large uh, transistors on here. The only thing connecting it is this communications cable. 
However, MPP Solar is known to pass voltage through these standoffs, so I think it's passing probably a sufficient amount of current up and down these standoffs here. So looking at our AC input conductors here, there are a pair of 8 gauge wires with a 105 degrees Celsius rating. Additionally, we have a very large fuse down here. This is Eaton brand, and the model number is 63LET. Uh, so I'm going to guess that's a 63 amp fuse. I don't see a rating on it, and I don't really want to take it out. Uh, so then we get to the interesting part over here, which is three very large relays. So this inverter has a built-in transfer switch, such that when your batteries are depleted, if you lose the AC input, you can program it in a variety of ways. Um, it will automatically switch over between grid and inverter power. And there is one thing of particular interest I'm looking for, and that is a uh, claim the other day that suggested a neutral ground bond on the AC output was automatically made uh, when this unit was running in inverter mode. So I just want to see if I can figure out how exactly that's happening down there. All right, guys, so I do see that while this inverter is off, uh, there is continuity between the neutral and ground on the output side. Uh, so we have three relays down here, and it appears that this top one here is for the neutral. Now, I don't know if all three of these are switching the AC, or uh, one of these might be for the charger, or what exactly the purposes of these are. Uh, it's very difficult to trace this circuit without removing the board, and I don't want to go through all that. I see there is a screw down there that is marked with a ground symbol. Uh, so, what I did was just removed that screw, and now we can see the neutral ground bond is gone. Uh, so it does appear you can remove the neutral ground bond in here, and it does appear there is space down in there between the chassis and the board such that it's intended to remove that screw. However, I am not an electrician, nor am I an engineer, so I would certainly not remove that screw unless the manufacturer specifically tells you it's okay to do so. Um, I'm simply pointing out that that appears to be where the bond is occurring within this inverter. These are the accessories the inverter comes with. We have four cable glands. We have a terminal box that mounts below the uh, DC battery input. We have a cable for connecting multiple inverters together. We have a cable with an RJ45 on one end and a 9-pin uh, serial port on the other. We have this red and black cable, which I believe is the current sharing connection between multiple inverters. We have a CD-ROM with the watch power software for the inverter, uh, if your computer actually has a CD drive these days. And lastly, we have a pack of MC4 connectors uh, for splicing on cabling for the PV input. Um, I also noticed that this included a fuse which is interesting because, because this kind of fuse is the one that's used on the 24 volt inverter and I didn't see any fuse that looked like this inside the 48 volt inverter so I'm not sure if that's a mistake or maybe there's one in there that I had missed. Alright, so that took quite a bit of work but I got it mounted up on the wall. Um, it is larger than I expected so I did have to mount it down a little bit lower which means there is no cement board below the bottom of the inverter. Um, there really should be, so I'll probably get someone added here in the future. But... Alright, so one thing I do want to test in this video is the idle or self-consumption of this inverter. That is, the load the inverter pulls while powered on, not in power savings mode, with no load connected on the AC output. So to do that, I connected some cabling here to the DC input. Alright, so for testing this inverter, I have it connected to a pair of SOK 24 volt batteries in series. So it'll give approximately 48 volts. Um, you can see the positive comes off. I've got an HRC Class T fuse there just in case. Then I have my Anderson SB175 plugs which go up to the inverter. Let's go ahead and turn it on. So one of the first things we need to do is get rid of that obnoxious beeping. Alright, so there we can see it's powered on. We see the AC inverter lights blinking and we see the output is 120 volts. So now I'm going to use my clamp meter here. You can see it's zeroed out. And we're seeing 1.34 amps, and with a battery voltage of 51.9 volts, that gives us 68 and a half watts. That's pretty good. All right, guys, very quick overview, like I had said. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that this inverter is UL1741 compliant. Uh, being compliant is not the same thing as being listed. Um, it has not been tested by UL. Compliant means that the manufacturer says it meets the specifications, and I think it's actually been verified by a third party, just not by uh, the UL labs themselves. So that is a great indication of quality and safety. I'm very excited to finally move on to testing some of the 48 volt batteries on the market. This inverter will enable me to do so. If you want to learn more about this inverter, I will leave a link down below. I did purchase this from Watts247, which is MPP Solar's authorized United States distributor. I was able to order directly from MPP Solar in the past. However, this last purchase I inquired about 
Uh, they actually referred me to Watts 247. The only other comment I have is that I don't really like that neutral ground bond in there. Again, I'm not an electrician, but I do feel that that should be done at the sub panel, not at the inverter itself. I'll have to do some more reading on that and I may send an email to MPP Solar just to get their opinion and see if they do recommend removing that screw. That is something I need to learn a bit on. My Ames inverter does not have neutral ground bonding at the inverter. Uh, that is actually bonded at the panel as well. So, But anyway, if you like this video, hit that like button. Any questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thanks for watching.